This Goki shit is still a little bit out of hand, and I wish that more had been done to it. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and this time we're going to be delving back into the more meta-relevant side of things. Basically looking at some new combos in the new format without Nightmare Goblin that Goki can utilize. This is still a very strong, very prominent deck. I still think it's probably the best deck in the TCG where we have Summon Sorceress. Uh, basically, this deck is definitely something you don't want to be shaking a stick at and just saying, Oh, that deck died. It really didn't. It got a lot more vulnerable at certain points. But it's definitely a deck that is still very capable of doing the plays that it used to do with some minor tweaking to the deck lists. Because the warrior type is one of the most generically supported uh, like types in Yu-Gi-Oh. I think it might even have the best most generic support out of all of the types in Yu-Gi-Oh. The only thing that would be up there with it is something like Dragon. Some of like the spellcaster support is a lot more niche and a lot more you know targeted at what it's meant to do. But with warriors, like you have access to Malicious, Armageddon Knights, Rhoda, basically literally a huge set of multiple toolboxes that are all super generic that you can put into basically any warrior deck. So, this is going to be a TCG North America combo because it does utilize Summon Sorceress. But what I'm going to be showing you is I'm going to be showing you Super X plus any warrior monster. So basically literally just making an Azold with a Goki monster is a two card combo that still lets you Gumblar your opponent for four and set up a live Trigate Wizard for negation on your opponent's turn. So still very possible for you to do. You just have to make some minor tweaks to deck building uh, and implement cards like Malicious and stuff. Uh, but it's still very possible to do. So without further ado, I'm going to just go ahead and show you how this combo operates and you can just see how it goes from there. So, you're gonna normal summon whatever Goki you have access to and then activate whatever card puts another warrior on the board. If it's Super X summoning another Goki, you do that. If it's Junk Forward plus Shade Breaking Down, you do that. If it's Instant Fusion, you do that. Like, it's super easy to get to your Isold. But so you're gonna go into your Isold with uh, with the uh, Super X and the Shade Breaking Down here, and you're going to trigger Isold Chain Link 1 and Super X Chain Link 2 to go ahead and start getting cards out of the deck. Now off the Super X you're going to add Goki Head back to your hand and off the Isold you're going to search because we started with Super X we're just going to add another Super X to our hand because we're just going to discard it for Head Bat. It's just Head Bat fodder here. But so now from here Isold is going to mill Phoenix Blade from deck to grave and summon Octo Stretch from your deck. Pretty simple pretty standard right? From here you're going to use the Head Bat discarding the Super X targeting the Octo Stretch summoning the Head Bat uh, just somewhere. And now from here you're able to use the Phoenix Blade and just go ahead and banish these two Super X's. You can't summon them for the rest of the turn because of Isold's restriction. Uh, and just add the Phoenix Blade back to your hand. Now, these are just basically filler cards just to fill out the rest of my hand. Obviously, if you opened Magical Midbreaker Field, you would have played it first because that turns off literally like 80% of the hand traps in the game that are good against your, your on-field monsters from actually affecting you. Uh, so, things like that. So this deck is still very resilient when you open things like this and Call by the Grave and like maybe like things like Eagle Booster uh, is stuff that can be played. Things to consider. But anyway, you go with Isold here and the Headbat into Summon Sorceress, which really just makes this deck shine in the North American areas of the TCG, the areas that have Summon Sorceress. And you're going to use Headbat's effect here just to search any Goki monster that you haven't used its search effect yet. And then you're going to use Summon Sorceress targeting the Octo Stretch here to summon Destiny Hero Malicious from your deck. Now, Malicious basically by itself and its ability to be accessed out of your deck by Summon Sorceress pretty much completely replaces Nightmare Goblin in the entirety of the combo sequence because what you would do with Nightmare Goblin is you get your additional normal summon for Ibli and that would bring back either a Link 2 or a Link 3 being either 2 or 3 materials worth of free Link material that you could utilize stepping up into your Gumblar and your extra Link and all that sort of stuff. Malicious fulfills that on its own in a Goblinless format. So. This deck definitely needed more hits to it in order to go away, but I mean it becomes a little bit more awkward playing without Goblin now, but I mean it's still very uh, very much a threat. So you're going to link the Malicious and the Octo Stretch away into Nightmare Phoenix or Cerberus, whichever side of the field you want to work on, and then the Octo Stretch here is going to search for Goki Rematch. Now we have this Malicious in our grave, we're going to start getting the Maliciouses out of our deck before we do any draws with any of the Nightmare Monsters because we want to not risk drawing the Malicious when we already have it established, right? And if you had drawn Malicious, all you'd have to do is like structure your play in a different way, where you get to, you could just activate a rematch here, 
and um, and like just go into the firewall mermaid phase and discard the malicious out of your hand uh, and then start doing stuff that way basically it would be only worth two materials at that point but summon sorceress still got another warrior from your deck so it wasn't really like you were missing out on anything and it's it's pretty resilient in terms of what cards you can draw in conjunction with one another but so from here, you're going to go into Firewall Dragon because this card is still in the game. Along with Topologic Gumblar Dragon, Gumblar was a card I was 1000% positive was going to get hit on the next Forbidden Unlimited list because of how quickly they imported it to us. Uh, but I guess that card's just not as unfair as I think it is. <laughs> but anyway, getting the last Malicious out of our deck, now we're going to go into the Nightmare Mermaid and start getting the, uh, the stuff moving with Firewall. So you're going to link the Phoenix away into Mermaid over the Firewall. You're going to activate Firewall's effect and Mermaid's effect. Chain Link 1 Mermaid, discarding Phoenix Blade, and Chain Link 2 Firewall, special summoning Twist Cobra from your hand. You have to do it in this order, or else if you make Mermaid Chain Link 2, the Ibli will be on the field, you can't summon anything but Link monsters, and then you wouldn't be able to do anything. And so now from here, you're just going to draw a card off the Mermaid. Free cards! Nice cards, right? But so now from here, you're going to link away the Twist Cobra and the Ibli into Binary Sorceress. This takes up the role that Goblin had of being a sideways pointing card. And its effects are actually pretty alright. It's actually a pretty good card. And I did not update the texture for this card. Oops! Missed that one. Oh well. Uh, but so from here you're going to activate the Ibli and the Twist Cobra's effect. You're going to structure it to where you don't get ashed on them if that's even relevant um, at this point in time. And you're going to summon the Ibli to your opponent's field. And you have rematch in hand and you're going to just search another Goki that has not used its search effect this turn. In this case, Rice Scorpio. So, what we get to do from here is we have access to things like Goki Rematch, we can add back the Divine Sword Phoenix Blade, we've got a lot of activities to be had. So we're going to activate the Rematch, we're going to bring back the Headbat and the Twist Cobra, and just summon them next to here and over here. You at least want to have one next to Firewall, uh, just as a uh, sort of little thing to go off of there. And then you're going to link into Nightmare Phoenix with the Last Malicious and the card that was next to Firewall. Now you're going to trigger Firewall's effect, and then you are going to trigger Firewall's effect again to add cards from your graveyard back to your hand. Uh, you, you could structure it to where you get three bounces by summoning like Cerberus over here or whatever, uh, but this is just the best way to do it for the two card combo, at least that I was able to find. Uh, but so, you're going to do Octo Stretch, and you're going to bounce Twist Cobra, just literally you need just two warriors, you just have to add Octo Stretch to your hand. Uh, that's one of the things that you have to add because it makes it easier for you to finish your uh, your combo sequence off. But then we're going to summon the Rescorpio over here, and then you're going to link away into Nightmare Unicorn using the Binary Sorceress and the Rescorpio. Put this right here. Now you get to activate the Scorpio's effect and the Firewall's effect special summon. We're not going to use Unicorn's effect here, even though we could easily spin the Ibli. We're not going to do that here because... We're going to be discarding cards with Gumblar, so we actually kind of want to leave that Ibli on their field, because if they're discarding cards like Danger cards that Special Summon themselves, or things like that, basically having Ibli on their field is very good for you. So it's just something to consider. But Chain Link 1 Firewall, Chain Link 2 the Rescorpio, and off of this Rescorpio you're just going to search Bear Hug, because that hasn't searched yet this turn either, and you're going to Special Summon the Octo Stretch from your hand. This Octo Stretch is going to go into the Link Karibo over the Nightmare Phoenix. So now you have established a U board. And now Firewall Dragon's effect is going to special summon the Bear Hug from your hand because it hasn't searched yet. Now, from what we're going to be doing here is that we've got this Link 3 on the field and we've got just a random monster over here. So we're going to establish those into our Gumblar. We're not going to trigger Firewall's effect because if we do that, we're going to special summon a card. We could special summon a monster over here and that's not next to a Link Arrow. Uh, but it doesn't really matter if you special summon the monster or not. You could special this Twist Cobra and that'd be fine. Uh, but you really want to keep the monster in your hand in this combo sequence where I have no other monsters in my hand. Ignoring the succession, acting like it's not there. You want to keep a monster in your hand for the later sequence where you're going to be adding Octo Stretch and specialing it off a of Firewall. Uh, so things to consider. There's multiple different ways you have to deal with this. But so from here you're going to activate the uh, Gumblar Dragon's effect. When it's extra linked, make your opponent discard two cards. You can add back Phoenix Blade, uh, and what we're able to do here is just banish this and banish this. It doesn't really matter what names you banish. And you have the Bear Hug over here that you can actually uh, start utilizing things with. So you've got these two monsters. You need to get the Link Kribo in the grave in order to do an Octo Stretch play. Or if the matchup is one where you just want to keep the U-board up, you can just start stepping into uh, Trigate Wizard through other means, like uh, 
like special summoning here before when you made the Gumblar because it's not a link arrow, so it wouldn't trigger Gumblar's discards. Uh, a bunch of different other factors. Um, you could make these into Trigate Wizard, and then if you have Succession or Reborn, Reborn Firewall next to it and keep the U-board up. There's a lot of different variations that can go into play here. But what I'm going to do specifically here is that I'm going to set up my Trigate Wizard with a Cerberus on the field, and since I haven't played the Midbreaker field, I'm able to target my opponent's cards, thusly this is going to generate another draw for me. So I'm going to use the Link Kribo and the Bear Hug into this Cerberus. The Bear Hug's effect is going to trigger. The Firewall Dragon's effect can trigger because I kept this monster in my hand. That was pretty important for the combo sequence. And then this Cerberus can trigger. So I'm going to go Chain Link, uh, chain link 1 Firewall, Chain Link 2 Cerberus, Chain Link 3 the Bear Hug. And the Cerberus is just going to discard the Free Phoenix Blade, destroy this, and then the Bear Hug will search for the Octo Stretch still in deck, which will be special summoned, and we'll start just uh, doing some stuff. But so I get to draw one card here, and then the Octo Stretch gets to get uh, special summoned out of my hand. And so now from here, my board is not really at a point where I could pass with it, because if I pass with this, the Link Rebo can tribute this and summon itself here, but there's no Link Arrow pointing here because of this Nightmare Phoenix. I also do not have access to a uh, Trigate Wizard, but that is very easily fixable on both fronts. Both of those problems are very fixable just by going Firewall and the Nightmare Phoenix into Trigate Wizard. You've got the Octo Stretch here. You've got... Uh, all the stuff set up that you need. Uh, you can go ahead and banish for Phoenix Blade again, even though it largely does not matter. Uh, you can just do so if you see fit. And then from here, like you just got all these cards. Uh, <laughs> you just have all these things. You've drawn twice. Uh, you've drawn once off Mermaid and twice off Cerberus if you went down this play uh, line. Any extender you have that's a Monster Reborn type card, like World Legacy Succession, could be played here to revive Firewall Dragon, bolster your board a little bit. There's a lot of different things that can be done in terms of activities. But basically, the most basic aspect... Let me just set one card so I don't discard in the end phase. Uh, not Surrender. That is not the end turn button. During the draw phase of the opponent's next turn, you are going to activate the Link Rebo, tributing the Octo Stretch, summoning this here. The Gumblar will trigger, and you could trigger your Octo Stretch to search a card. Octo Stretch could search Rematch if you want to risk discarding it up to you, completely up to you. Two, uh, didn't hit the rematch, good shit. But so now, the opponent discards two, they're on two cards, they have to deal with the Trigate Wizard. Uh, obviously, some things change if your opponent has graveyard effects that you see them discard during the during their own turn, uh, but those are obviously mitigatable with other cards in your deck, like Extenders, if it's cards like uh, Bigfoot and stuff, you could have Cerberus up already if you wanted to adjust the combo sequence to make it to where you're doing it on the other side of the field. Because remember, we had Phoenix over here when we summoned Gumblar, but you could easily just reverse the side of the board you're working on and have it be Firewall, Gumblar, Cerberus pointing at Link Karibo. You could easily switch this up based off how you want to build your deck. A bunch of different stuff is factors as well, like Midbreaker Field, all this sort of stuff. This deck is definitely not a dead deck by any stretch of the imagination. And like, the deck doesn't have to be changed that much, and you don't have to run any like off-theme cards, really, because people were playing things like Dark Goki last format anyway. So, like, the the Goblin Ban did make the boards less protectable in grind gamey like, matchups and, like, back row deck matchups and stuff like that. But it is still a very, very strong contender deck. And this sort of an ending field, where Gumblar Trigate is what you've got and you haven't U-linked your opponent, is a very standard Goki opening from last format. People want to complain about the U-board, 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 all that sort of stuff. The better Goki players were very rarely actually U-boarding anybody unless they were playing against a combo deck. If they were playing against Altergeist, Brandish, uh, any of that sort of stuff, Sky Striker, Trickstar, or anything like that, these are the kind of boards they were making. They were making Trigate and having one of their blanket protection things, like usually Goblin, and then having Gumblar either here or here. It was like Gumblar up here, Trigate, Goblin, Phoenix, or something like that. Uh, against like those back row decks where you didn't really have to lock them out of the extra deck, you just had to make it to where they couldn't interact with your cards. Uh, and that's sort of the same sort of uh, deal that we can do currently with the Goki deck. So this is just one combo. Uh, I could easily show you some others in some future videos, uh, showing you some of the new format capabilities of this deck. I could show you one that is a full U-Link and Gumblar for four. Uh, that's one of the more interesting and involved ones, so it's definitely something I could go for. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Um, I personally... I don't really care for Goki, 
but as a competitive player I have to acknowledge that it exists and I have to acknowledge it is a combo deck and being a combo deck it is something that I would enjoy playing if I wanted to dedicate time into it. Uh, I just feel like a card like Gumblar Dragon is what breaks this wide open because m just making a U-Link and leaving your opponent on six cards with a Trigate Wizard is pretty easy to deal with, but once you Gumblar them for four and then set up a Trigate or a U-Link Trigate, that's when it becomes really hard and ignorant to handle. I'm very, very confused as to why Topologic Gumblar Dragon is allowed to exist in the game. A lot more than Firewall. I can understand them having a reason why they don't want to get rid of Firewall because it does enable combo decks to be a bit better, but Gumblar is what sort of gives them a guaranteed extra deck win condition by making your opponent basically go minus four. Uh, and so that's, that's kind of a problem in my eyes, but I want to know what you guys' thoughts are in the comments down below as always. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your comments are in the comments down below. As I've already said, leave a positive comment, leave uh, some suggestions, some feedback, all that sort of stuff. If you want to see more Goki combos, some more involved ones, then definitely let me know. I will probably be happy to take those on. But otherwise, basically just let me know what you thought. Like the video if you want to see more combo tutorials and more videos from me. Subscribe if you're new here and already haven't and want to see more amazing and awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content to try and improve yourself as I try to improve myself. All that sort of jazz and nonsense. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I'll see you in the next video. Or the 200th YCS, if you're going there. Look for me. I'll be there.